1983 is the year that brought us Return of the Jedi, the final part of the original Star Wars trilogy. And Club Tropicana from Wham! Drinks and STDs were free there, you would have thought. Dirk the Daring um, in the Dragon's Lair arcade game. Bloody hard that was. He became a household name. Seat belts became compulsory um, to wear at all times when driving and in cars. Uh, Fraggle Rock uh, from Jim Henson uh, started on TV. Some hairy Scotsman beat some hairy Spaniards uh, to win some kind of football thing. I don't know which one. Michael Jackson was perfecting the art of walking backwards whilst trying to go forwards and looking cool. And from Dudley in the West Midlands uh, came one of the uh, Spectrum's um, great software houses, Gargoyle Games. They were founded by Greg Follis and Roy Carter, who um, originally set it up so that they could publish their own... Uh, those games started with Ad Astra. Um, which was released in 1984. Um, it's a space shoot 'em up game. Uh, fairly, uh, fairly good. Fairly, very, very difficult. Um, you control this kind of uh, rocket-powered dairy lead triangle as you zoom around trying to avoid planets. Um, when you see the baddie ships eventually appear, you can see there's something of a, uh, a Star Wars influence um, in the way they move, etc. Um, Eventually, if I ever get as far as seeing any ships, um, it's a bit tricky, this game. Um, there's loads of Star Killer bases uh, zooming past you. You know, Star Killer Base, that place from The Force Awakens, a planet sized super weapon that uh, only seems to have six stormtroopers on duty at any one time. But anyway, it's, um, it, it is tricky. It's, uh, it's got some nice effects in it, um, as you can see. Um, it's, it's not a bad game. Obviously, it's showing. Um, uh, that it's uh, it, it's age. There you go, some sort of star destroyer and tie fighter type sort of things, um, and and death, uh, which visits me frequently in this game. Oh, just let this play out for a bit. So I'm, I, I've never been any good at this game. Um, it was well received at the time, I believe. Um, you can see, um, you know, it's it's quite sort of frantic and. Um, You've got to sort of keep your wits about you at all times, which you do really in most shoot 'em ups. Um, the score is uh, atrocious, and there's even a timer on there that sort of lets you know how crap you are by uh, letting you know how long your game lasts. And I think I've managed much more than I managed to uh, to last in uh, 1984. But hey ho, one more one more uh, last quick blast at it. We'll see how it uh, how it goes. Probably not great. Here we are, off again. Rocket powered Dairy Lee Triangle. Hmm, yeah. Gonna wait for some baddies. Oh, there we go. Right, okay. Oh, and again. And again. Still nice explosion effects, I suppose. So the stay in one part of the screen technique it doesn't work at all on this one as you can tell I'm absolutely crap on it oh I got a blue one ah no blue his mate got me back balls still it's nothing if not a challenge Obviously, quite a few things shifting around on the screen at, uh, at any one time. Not bad. Not great, but uh, but not bad. I think I'm just about to give this one up in a minute, I think. <laughs> Ow! And let's move on. So the second game from them was Turn a Nog, or I don't know what it's called. I always used to call it Giant Ron, because um, it's an anagram of uh, Turn a Nog. And the bloke, uh, I call him Giant Ron. He's uh, got some move action going on there. He's um, supposed to be some kind of uh, 
Celtic hero. Um, there is a kind of backstory to it, but to me, he looks a bit like a topless bin man uh, rampaging around medieval times. Um, I did enjoy this game back in the day, but playing it now, I can't remember for the life of me what you got to do in it. Um, I love the way his mullet flows out behind him. It's uh, should really be called Professional Chris Waddle Simulator. Obviously, there's no penalty section. But uh, this was one of their sort of uh, uh, trademark sort of styles and, and games uh, of uh, game styles that Gargoyle um, were known for and renowned for and are very highly regarded for. Um, I haven't got a clue where I'm going, I'm just wandering around uh, in the forest by the look of things. Um, see how we go. Come on. I never knew how to spell his name. You see, the, the hero's name is something like Cuchulain, Cuchulain, some kind of Gaelic um, Irish name. Um, that's, again, that's one of the reasons I just call him Ron. Um, but, hmm. Yeah. Wonder which way to go. Let's go this way. That way looks fun. Obviously, he's got uh, the entire uh, Middle Ages to himself at the moment. Wonder why that is. Well, we've picked up a couple of things. We've picked up a, an axe and something. Oh, there's a monkey thing trying to kill me. Obviously, uh, monkeys became extinct uh, in Ireland uh, around about the same time as uh, snakes did, thanks to St. Patrick. A bloody good job too, because they kill me. Oh, it's a bit dark as well. Oh, quite a confusing sort of angles. So once you get used to them, um, it becomes a bit more easier to pick up and uh, sort of work out uh, which way you're going, etc. He does like flashing his moves at the screen. I think uh, Giant Ron needs some kind of sports bra. And uh, What's the thing with wellies in the Middle Ages? Oh, moves again. Some kind of giant chimney thing in the background going off. We'll just let him have a ramble for... Uh, for a while. Let's obviously what I'm doing with this voiceover. Obviously, I have been playing the game, but I've recorded the voiceover separately because I'm nowhere near as talented enough to be... There's a bleeding monkey thing again. Um, talented enough to be able to play and speak at the same time. It's just like patting your belly or rubbing your belly and patting your head. I can't do both at the same time. So this is Turner Dog. Uh, I've where I've good good lord, what's happened to him? He's got gone into like some kind of X-ray room or something like that. So yeah, this is me actually playing the game, but the commentary I'm obviously recording after I've recorded the gameplay. And I haven't got a clue where I'm going or what I am doing at that precise moment in time. Now, Turn and Og was followed by a sequel, um, again starring uh, Giant Ron, um, which was actually a prequel. Dundarak is actually set before, and we all know nothing can go wrong with prequels, and they're much better than the films that follow or games that follow. Uh, Phantom Menace, yes, thank you, Yoda. So anyway, Dundarak is continuing our hero's adventures, but he's met a nice young lady who's just ignored him and walked off. We appear to be wandering around Nerd Square at the moment. It's charming. Um, this game I've actually put on uh, demo mode. I never actually played Dundarak. Um, but as you can see, Giant Ron, it's obviously a little bit nippy. He's got, got a vest on now. Still wearing his wellies. Um, this is just on demo mode. Um, he just appears to be just walking round and round. Um, I don't know, he's waiting for the post office to open to cash his gyro. Um, I don't really know. I never. This is the first time I've played this game. I did have Turn and Og at the time. But they followed this up with a game in a similar style 
um, but that was set in outer space, and it was called Marsport, and that's coming up now, as you can see. Really, you know, very, very similar game style. This was supposed to be one of a trilogy. Um, Fornax and Gaff were the other games that um, Gargoyle planned, um, but they never released them. Um, I don't know why. Um, but this is just giant run in space. Look, the wellies give it away. Um, you're just having a little wander around there. This is on demo mode as well. I did try playing it, but um, really, really couldn't uh, couldn't get to grips with it. Um, again, this at the time was really, really quite highly received um, and very well regarded. Um, but you know, big old Ronnie gets about a bit. What am I talking about? Anyway, let's just let this demo sort of play out for a, a little bit longer. Um, interesting to, to know why the sequels were never released um, you know I'm sure I remember this game being really popular um, but they followed this up with a game called Heavy on the Magic which again was going to be one of a series of games and again the follow up games didn't um, materialise now I did try to play this this is the first time I've ever played this one as well and I was absolutely hopeless at it. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Didn't have a clue where I was going. I should really have um, like read some instructions or perhaps watched a walkthrough of it, etc. Just to sort of try and find out what was going on. Um, but what's the fun in that? But this is Ron again. Look, look. It's supposed to be a different hero. But look at the wellies. They give it away. Yep, showing off now. Um, wearing his Harry Potter um, knockoff cape. You're a wizard, Ron! And I managed to get the hang of going in and out of tunnels and stuff. But, so yeah, exactly. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'll just have a wander around, which is what I did. I couldn't work out how to pick things up off the tables, <laughs> etc. So, but its graphical style is still is really good. You know, there's, there's lots of um, quirky humour going on in, in that character. The way you sort of looks at you out the screen as if to say come on get on with it and I don't know what that flamey thing is but it doesn't look like it's uh, gonna be any good no he doesn't like that just one but his cloak is fireproof by the look of things so no damage done um, yeah exactly what do I do don't just stand there Ron it looks like a medieval flasher really doesn't he yep Go on, go through that door. Uh, or, or try walking through the wall. Yeah, the door. Go through the door. Oh. The door. Go through the door. That's better. And now we're in purple uh, zone. Again, I've not got a clue what's going on here. But, you know, I, I'll try and um, actually revisit each of these games one by one in separate sort of standalone videos the purpose of this is just to show you um, gargoyles um, output um, and a very very smiley friendly dragon thing there who is trying to kill me um, right okay that's actually called a wyvern uh, I don't know what a wyvern is um, oh yeah it's no time for doing YMCA come on you've got to get out of there now this time, as you can tell by the screen at the bottom, I'm pressing all sorts of buttons and making him disappear. Hmm. Now I'm in a red room. And we'll just stand there, shall we? And shake our hips. Ooh. He's got a little Eurovision dance move going on there. Yeah, let's go and read this thing on the wall. Yep, yeah, I can't read. I don't understand what that says either. I don't speak foreign. Can't read it either. Where should we go? Ah, oh, back in the room with two tables. Where's Tommy Cooper when you need him? Bottle, glass, glass, bottle. Come on, Ron. As Gargoyle Games, they can't find out an awful lot about them. I know they went to release a, a version of Turner Nog um, a few years back as a like remake for PC. 
um, but nothing ever came of it. And it's a shame because they seem to, you know, efforts have been made to sort of contact them and I don't think they've been successful to get some kind of like insight into how the company was set up, etc. The only stuff I can find about Gargoyle, Gargoyle is stuff that was um, from the time, like um, interviews in Crash, your Sinclair, the, the magazines of the day, etc. So um, I'm not sure why um, they're so sort of... Uh, hard to track down or pin down etc you know no one can force people to to oh bloody hell look at that it's me um yeah, it would be nice to sort of hear from them um and see what they're taking a view whether or not they're still in the industry uh, mr follis and mr carter and again he's uh trying to ron is trying to get involved in a dance off with them now suivo's world um was a isometric game that they released um, starring Suivo, who's that long-necked thingy who, with a penchant for falling down holes. Um, and I was never any good at isometric games either, but I um, uh, wasn't any good at this either. <laughs> but there, I seem to remember it had some fiendish sort of puzzles and was quite well laid out. I don't think it was as... Uh, well received as the the likes of your head over heels etc which i think is um from the spectrum sort of uh, and the the um uh, the the spanish game um set in the the sort of vampire um sort of lands etc can never remember what it's called but those you know it's a uh, I can, well, it, from what I've read, I considered the the sort of benchmarks of um, isometric games. I mean, there were a load of enjoyable ones, um, but none that sort of hit those heights, um, I don't think, anyway. Um, so this is Suivo's World, WRLD. It's going to get slightly confusing because um, 1985 or 86, the 1 to 8K Spectrum was released. And they released uh, a version of Suivo for that, which a, a short-term segment's going to follow uh, within a minute called Suivo's World, which is confusing. Except World was spelt W-H-I-R-L-E-D. And it added some more rooms and uh, more puzzles, etc. But it was still sort of basically the same game. Um, I do not know what's happened to the sound. Um which is why I'm sort of uh, rabbiting quite a bit more than uh, I usually am. Uh, and I'm always rabbiting. Anyway, let's uh, let's have a very, very quick um, minute on uh, Suivo's World, the 1 to 8K Spectrum version of, it, of that previous game. You can see a few more lands, more, still the same hole you drop down, still basically the same game. Still quite a, an appealing character um, is uh, young Suivo. Not even sure where they got his name from, but uh, I think this game did uh, did did well as well. Um, it was obviously it was one of the games um, designed specifically for the the one two eight spectrum. Um, of which there were only a few at the start of it. Uh, the ones I can recall, uh, you had the Daily Thompson um, Super Test, and what was it? Um, Never Ending Story from Ocean. Uh, and then I think Three Weeks in Paradise as well had a, a, a sort of dedicated 1 to 8K version released at, at or around the sort of release date of the... Um, uh, the one to eight. obviously other one to eight only sort of games followed, um, such as Where Time Stood Still um, from Ocean and Denton Dent Designs one. Um, absolute classic that game is, um, really really great. Um, but this is little Suivo having a run around in uh, in 128k, not actually getting anywhere. Um, I'm not playing the game to sort of complete it. Just sort of playing it was a good job I'm not playing it to complete it I wouldn't be able to I wouldn't have a clue how to uh, 
So that Suivo's world. Now moving on, um, Gargoyle uh, set up a, a sort of side software label called Faster Than Light, which was going to handle arcade-style games. The first one they released was Light Force, which caused a bit of a stir at the time amongst the Spectrum world because of the Spectrum's well-known problems with um, attribute clash, uh, you know, color bleed, etc., like that. And um, Light Force basically eradicates that through some sort of clever um, programming tricks. And as you can see, it's um, it's quite colourful. And I never had this game at the time, but I remember. Um, Crash's review and saying on oh, the use of colour, um, revolutionary, um, etc. And it, it plays all right. Um, it's a bit tricky. Um, it's not the best shooting game in the world, but um, you know it's not the worst. And I it only looks bad probably because I'm bad at it. Um, but even now, it's it's still you know it's you look at it and you think yeah you know that's really. Um, evidence of how some programmers um, of the time managed to overcome the Spectrum's limitations um, quite spectacularly. I mean, there were some even more colourful games released later in the machine's life, like uh, Trantor, Savage, um, Dandare 3, although that game isn't particularly great itself, but, you know, the, the graphics on it are, are really, really something to... Uh, to have a look at, um, track it down and, and have a play if you can, um, just to have a look at it. Um, but you see in Light Force things move fairly swiftly uh, along. Um, the bad is your ship doesn't seem to move um, all that well. It's a bit, bit sluggish control, but I am playing this on emulation on my laptop. That I don't know, that might have something to do with it. Um, but then, like I say, games of this ilk I'm um, not any good at anyway either. Um, you know, Flying Shark is a similar style, um, up the screen shooter, and you know, just as crap at that as well. Although it's a much faster, uh, much more solid game than Light Force. The second game, or one of the other games they released, was Hydrofall, um, which we're going to look at in just a second. It's kind of like a return to the isometric um, style of Suivo, but set underwater, which gives it sort of a novel. Um, sort of setting and it's not the greatest game um, it's got one or two quirks about it such as the fact that it mimics you being underwater by having you kind of um, sort of floating mid-screen um, and you know you sort of navigate entrances and exits like halfway up the walls um, etc so those things um, Hydrofall does really well um, and again, you can see it's really nicely designed. Um, when I can get out the door, uh, it just again might just be me. I'm, I'm, I've never been any good at the isometric type of game, but hey ho, let's just let this um, section play out. Again, I did play this. This is actually me playing it, um, but recording the commentary um, later. Um, so that I can sort of do it at my leisure, if you like. Now the final um, Faster Than Light or FTL um, game that came out on the, that label is coming up in just a second and it's called Shockway Rider. And it's a bit of a strange game, Shockway Rider. Um, it's well presented. Uh, as you'll see, the loading screen is just coming up in a second. Um, so this is just playing out. Here we go, Shockway Rider. You, firstly, your character doesn't look anything like that bloke on the loading screen. I don't know who he is. He looks quite surprised to be there. Um, there's some kind of futuristic uh, time where, you know, people are wearing shoes that are so big and clunky um, that the pavements have to move so that um, people can get around because just walking in these comedy boots is... Um, quite something. Now this is just on demo mode. Um, I did try playing this game but I was hopeless at it. I just love the way the guy just pogo's around and his head falls off whenever he bumps into a baddie. It also reminds me a bit of the Private Walker character from Dad's Army uh, played by James Beck. The sort of uh, it was like a space age spiv. Um, 
it's not a great game. Um, it looks nice. Um, it moves well. There's a lot of enemies on the screen. Um, but is it a great game from what I've played of it? Um, no, it isn't. Um, but it's not It's not rubbish. Um, just coming back up again to the demo. He has, uh, <laughs> he has difficulty negotiating hurdles as well. <laughs> just decapitates himself. It's those big clown shoes, I'm telling you. You know, no one can be expected to run fast and fight baddies wearing shoes like that. Can't even use that as an excuse because the baddies' um, shoes are just as bad, really. It is like it's a knockout from the future. <laughs> Good Lord. Now, Gargo also did some games for other people as well, um, one of which was uh, Scooby-Doo. Um, which varied differently, vastly differently from um, the version that Elite actually planned. They couldn't get that one off the ground, so they commissioned Gargoyle to do this version. It's quite different. It's very basic, I think, in premise. It's well presented. Looks the part. Um, but is it a good game? It's It will kill 10 minutes or so. It's, it's not fantastic, but it does, um, like I say, I mean, it... It looks good. Even now, the sort of loading screen's good. I'm just going to define the keys here, etc., etc., and then we're going to crack on and have a quick go. Now, you'll notice scooby he's got this kind of camp run, um, and the aim is he's got to rescue um, Shaggy, uh, LL Cool J, um, Eminem, and Marky Mark from the Funky Bunch, uh, who've all got themselves captured. And it's his job to uncapture them, basically, <laughs> whilst to uh, run... Now, this game is actually really difficult. Um, if you get the enemies coming at you at the wrong speed at the wrong time, you know, it's you're going to get got by one of them. And luckily, extra lives are sort of hanging around quite um, freely... Um, scattered around um, in the form of those Scooby snacks that you could see there. You could see that I lasted about two seconds on that. But um, again, I don't know what's going on with the sound of this game. Um, it was playing while I was uh, uh, using the emulator and then it just, uh, the, the sound just sort of stopped. But, you know, you can still tell um, what the game is, what it's about, etc. So like I say, really, really well presented. Um, but rock hard doesn't look like it's rock hard but it's rock hard well to me it is anyway you lot probably breeze through the bleeding thing so let's let scooby bash some more ghosts now all the games that i can track down that uh, uh, gargoyle produced for other uh, companies they produce for elite systems who were behind um like ghosts and goblins space harrier roller coaster airwolf um those kind of games and the next one that's coming up is um another one of them uh it's called super trucks now i can show you the loading screen for super trucks but i can't show you the game because it didn't load so we're going to the next one the final one thundercats based on the tv series now thundercats you know you, you play there's mr thundercat um whizzing along yeah got off run around beating up midgets and um, long-haired uh, people um, and it's not as it's a fairly sort of basic um, side to side um, run and jump and slashy sort of game but it's surprisingly um, easy to die um, especially if you're me yes Thundercats uh, anyway Jim Thundercat which is his name um, he has to run from left to right, and it's kind of like a, a an assault course as well. You get timed at the end, and you get a bonus based on how quick you completed the level, etc. Look at that. You'd have thought a Thundercat could bloody swim. Anyway, one of the things I've always uh, wondered is, could a Thundercat beat a Power Ranger in a fight? Hmm. Things like that will keep me awake for ages. Anyway, I'm in this kind of blue bit now, and um, Naughty Blackbirds... Um, Vex me greatly. And the midgets are back as well. Bloody midgets. Right, and I've got to try and collect that thing up there whilst not getting... Oh, there we go. Anyway, that was Thundercats. 
And that basically was an overview of um, Gargoyle Games and the sort of start to end or, um, of them, etc. Now, I hope you like the video. Um, please feel free to subscribe on YouTube and also follow me on Twitter at that address. Okay, thank you ever so much.